Well, let's now speak to political commentator Stephen Carlton. Well, Stephen, welcome to the show. So we've gone from Rwanda, it would seem, to rolling out the red carpet. The Refugee Council today stated it expects 60,000 of the 90,000 earmarks of deportation will now successfully claim asylum and have the right to remain in the United Kingdom. Stephen, what message does that send out to the people smugglers? Well, it's uh, saying we're open for business and come and join us at any time, really. That's the big message from it. Uh, but the uh, what you've just said there about the in the system already, we've got 90,000 people in the system. And it's the refuge Refugees Council that reckon that two-thirds of them will be granted asylum. Uh, so it means that even if you break the law and you come here as an illegal immigrant, uh, we're going to give you a pat on the back and say, yes, come in. And I just think that is the wrong message completely to be sending out. Um, I mean, this is a knock-on effect, really, when you think about it, from the Blair days where we had open borders. So when we had the Conservative government trying to um, achieve something by coming up with the Rwanda plan, if it was good or bad, and they invested a considerable amount of money into this, where you've got um, Yvette Cooper now saying, oh, well, we're going to start saving money straight away. Hang on a minute, we've lost millions now with the deal that we're going to get to Rwanda. And we're under no obligation to get a penny of that money back. Us as a nation now are reneging on the deal that we've done with Rwanda. So if Yvette Cooper thinks that they're going to hand over millions of pounds, I can't see that happening. And with 60,000 people, from, just from this tranche of people alone, yeah. Stephen, now, automatically, if they get that asylum, entitled to social housing, to yep. benefits, to NHS treatment, the right to work. They are literally yep. coming to this country illegally and they are literally being given the full rights of citizenship. And yet, Stephen, we can see on our screens now pictures from Blenheim Palace at the European political community. Sakir Starmer has got 50 European leaders, the top brass, including European Union top brass, over to Britain, looking to them for assistance in somehow trying to end this. But, Stephen, we... We announced yesterday, exclusively on GB News, astonishing figures of 1.265 million illegal immigrants arriving in 27 EU member states last year alone. Stephen, if the European Union cannot even control their own borders, how on earth can we turn to them for assistance to keep illegals out of our country? Well, absolutely. Um, and then they're still trying to dictate to us who we should be taking on. And I think this idea that Sakir came up with this morning about doing a deal that they can take some back and we will take on uh, legitimate uh, asylum seekers, I think that's a ludicrous idea again, because where do you draw the line there? And the saddest thing about all this is there's genuine people in the world that do need to come to this country for asylum. And that means that we can't help them as well as we might do because of these illegal people uh, raiding our shores, basically. And also, the, the other knock-on effect to that is the infrastructure, our infrastructure, where you put a lot of people in one area where the hospitals are struggling, you've got the uh, dentists. I mean, you try and get a dentist appointment now, and it's uh, it's nearly impossible. So we're at bursting point as it is with, our, with the people who currently live in this country, and to take endless amounts of people without any plans to accommodate for all this, it's an impossible situation. And it's just going to get worse and worse under this Labour government. And Stephen Carlton was Sakir Starmer, David Lammy, um, Nick Thomas Simmons, the new commissioner, the Minister for European Relations. They've all repeatedly said that the Labour Party has no intention of reversing Brexit, no intention of a second referendum. And of course, this convention we can see on our screens now, the European Political Community Convention at Blenheim Palace, that was set up by Rishi Sunak. That was a pre. Yeah booked, diarised event. This isn't Sakir Starmer organising this, and that makes you wonder why on earth did Rishi Sunak call the election early? He could have been him on this stage today. That's a separate Absolutely. issue. But do you think that actually Sakir Starmer, who campaigned for so long to reverse Brexit, and he said he sees his natural spiritual homeland as Brussels, not Britain, do you think that these kind of events, while we might not see a formal realignment. We might see political deals done in the background, piecemeal deals on immigration, on energy, on who knows what. Do you think we are seeing today the beginnings, Stephen, of a manoeuvre of a much closer alignment 
in a way that people never voted for when they voted for Brexit in 2016. Yes, well, absolutely. If you look at uh, Sir Kerr's clip that you were playing earlier on, all the language in that was geared up to our friendship with Europe and reacting closer with Europe and forging closer links and working together. All the language was there in that in that statement that he made earlier on. The alarm bells are ringing for everyone now, and uh, a lot of people are going to be wondering why they voted the way they did. And um, do you think that these kind of deals with piecemeal deals with countries. We've, we saw Rishi Sunak, when he was still the Prime Minister, um, cozying up to Georgia Maloney. Maloney has now got a lot more power in the European Union. She, she's forged herself to be the centre heart of the right in Brussels. Now, Sakir Starmer is having meetings with Georgia Maloney. But you look at these figures here, Stephen. Italy had 676,000 illegal immigrants arrive on its shores in nine years, 2012 to 2023, sorry, 11 years. A total inability to control its own borders. The same with France, 1.2 million. Hungary, 1.25 million. Three quarters of a million going to Spain. 2.15 million going to Germany. 1.8 million going to Greece. And these are the, just the illegals. These aren't the total yeah. asylum seekers. And do you fear, Stephen, that any kind of deal with the European Union, with all these presidents, with all these prime ministers, it would mean inevitably having to take our fair share of those massive numbers. Well, this is why it's so important not to forge closer links with Europe, because we can't take on their problem. We've got our own problem, and, and they're really fueling the problem from not containing it themselves. And then uh, quite freely, like, this is why we're not seeing the French trying to stop them crossing the channel, really. Um, you was going on before at the start of the programme about one of our boats going over to France to drop them off. I remember earlier on in the year, we had a, a boat go out to the a mile off the coast of France and then bring them all the way back to the UK. At least yesterday, they actually sent them back to Calais. But uh, we can't really be cooperating with uh, Europe agreeing to take any more people. This, the illegal uh, migrations have to stop and you, Europe have to work together and stop that. And they've got to come up with some tremendous plan. Now, Stephen Carlson, was, some people might say we should be forging closer alliances. We could only solve this problem by working together. And then others might rightly turn around and say, well, if they can't control their own borders, and if, they, if, if their own voters are telling them, as we saw in France, as we saw in Italy, that they need to get a grip, why on earth are they suddenly going to help people hurry through, uh, sorry, so keep them in their country rather than hurrying through to Britain? Stephen Carlson Woods, thank you very much.